Hello again. Hello again. Howdy and welcome. Uh, uh, we are uh, live again from the beautiful Barrel 21. Sam, can you give us the details on that? Sure. Barrel 21 Distillery and Dining, State College, Pennsylvania, a true grain, grain yes, grain, grain to glass distillery uh, that makes some very innovative products, including my personal recipe for their seasonal rock and rye, of which I'm fairly proud. That's coming up, right? It's coming up. Halloween release. Yeah. Very nice. Very yeah. nice. Um, so today we are um, doing another Whiskey Masterclass tasting. Um, I am Lou Brayson, the author of Whiskey Masterclass, and this is my my buddy Sam Kamlenik, who is the uh, the editor of my book and the copy editor of Whiskey Advocate, uh, where I was the um, managing editor for about 20 years, uh, which is where we... Uh, where we learned to work together, which was not <laughs> <laughs> So today we have uh, the second half of the uh, Diageo special releases for 2020. Um, we how cool is this? In half. What's that? You said, and how cool is this? Oh, yeah. Well, we decided to split it in half by age. Um, we did four under 20s in the previous episode. This episode, we have a Craig and Moore 20 year old, a Mortlock 21, a Dalwini 30, and a Pity Vake 30. Pity Vake being the only one in this year's releases that is from a, uh, a ghost distillery. Pity Vake was uh, demolished um, a while back. Um, never really was around that long. I think it was only open for like under 25 years. Really? 73 to 95, I want to say, yeah. So it was a modern so, distillery that didn't make it through the, the down years. Yeah, and, and not by much, unfortunately. Um, well, I feel the same way. You still have some whiskey around. I feel the same way about Pennsylvania Mictors. Have they been able to hang on for another six, seven, eight so years? Just that close, yeah. yeah. But right. so it goes. So it goes. Um... As we mentioned in the last episode, this is a uh, this is a place that Sam is not used to being, um, but he had a really good time in the first episode. I have no reason to believe it's not going to be another one. Mm. So let's jump right on to this Craigenmore. Uh, Craigenmore 20, it is bottled at 55.8%. All of these are uh, natural cast strength for the whiskeys, uh, these releases. So 55.8 at 20 years. And Absolutely. again, the, actually that one's one of the darker ones. Yeah. <laughs> so it's I'm getting nuts. I'm getting nuts on this. I have to say this is the shyest nose we've had so far. Doesn't make it any less appealing though. It's good smelling no. product. Yes, it's a bit reticent. If you're going to say nuts, I'm, I'm thinking like maybe like lightly candied, a little bit of now, yeah. a little bit of toffee, glazed walnuts. Mm-hmm. Like those, um, the wet walnuts you get on ice cream. Oh yeah, on your Sunday. Yeah. Mm. Makes me want some. Boy, that smells really nice. Yeah, it's coming out more. I think it's warming up with my hand there. Have the special releases always been all cask strength? I don't know. I, I want to say yes, but I don't know for sure. That's a big whiskey. That is sprightly for 20 years old. Nice body. As, red, as reticent as the nose is, there's a lot going on. This whiskey almost sparkles on your tongue. Yeah. Like yeah, it's pop very rocks. active. Pop rocks almost. Oh, that's a nice finish. Mm -hmm. Not overly woody for 20. No, not at all. Makes you, want, no. makes you wonder how many fills these casks went through prior to this. I don't know. With that color, I'm thinking they're probably first fills, but I don't know. 
All right. Moving on. The next one is the Beast, Mortlock. Uh, 21 years, 56. I'm sorry. Yeah, it is 56.9. Couldn't tell if it was a six or an eight. 56.9%. Uh, well, you mentioned umami on one oh, of those movies yeah. earlier. There's some umami on this. Yeah, this is a uh, Mordlock's. I don't know. Mordlock took me a while to warm up to. Um, I just wasn't getting it. And then <coughs> last year, I guess we um, we took a family vacation. We went up to Halifax, Nova Scotia, and Kathy and I were out wandering around late one night and stuff in a whiskey bar called the Press Gang. And I, I'm just looking at it, and I'm <laughs> what do I get? And there was an old. Uh, Flora and Fauna bottling of a 16 year old Mortlock. And I thought, I will do that. And I get it. It's just. It was a wise choice. It's a really heavy spirit. Um, yes. They do a. Um, I was reading up on the distillation again. They do a really different distillation. It's not just that. I mean, every, when, when, they, when people write about Mortlock's distillation, they usually talk about how they split the faints and they do dud runs of where they run the, the whole thing through twice and then run it through one more time and then take the hard cut. Um, and all that's gone through um, a special small still they have that they call the Wee Witchy. And that's a, the thing that caught me is that they just still like bang, bang, bang don't give the copper a chance to recover from each run. So they're deliberately trying to cut down on the copper interaction. Interesting. They want a heavy, so they, meaty spirit. They need some of that sulfur in there. Exactly. And I think that's that's got a, a big influence. And again, I mean, I realize I'm, you know, it sounds like I'm plugging the book, but this is one of the things, this is one of the things that builds flavor in whiskey. Um, this, this, how you run the still. And I think that gets overlooked a lot. Um, you know, we talk about what kind of still it is, what shape the still is. Um, and this whole, uh, thing of, you know, some of them have a little condenser on the side, a, a purifier, I think Ardbeg calls it. Um, some of them have a, like this, an odd distillation regimen and, and all those affect the flavor. But how you run the still has an effect as well, and you can smell and taste it right here. Pine needles. I'm getting some pine needles in there. Maybe it's balsam. Yeah. Yeah, oh man. The tingle as that goes down. That is such an episodic whiskey. Yes. Think, no, think, peace, think. peace, peace, yeah. Yeah, mm hmm And again, there's some solid legs on this glass. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, feel how, I don't know, chunky it tastes in your mouth. Uh, chunky? Chunky's not the right Hefty. word. Hefty. Thick. 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 I like my whiskey chunky. <laughs> That's what my uh, my daughter's been saying that about the cat next door. He's kind of chunky. <laughs> <laughs> mm. well, I'll tell you what, um, they succeed in their mission with uh, getting some different flavors out of that spirit that you don't... Man, we haven't had anything like this in this series yet. Oh, no. And how old? Uh, 21. Wow. It's wow. legal... It's a legal drinking age. Yes. Mm, mm, mm. I'll tell you what, I have uh, Avalon becoming from being perplexed and not impressed to a Mortlock fan. Well, it's not an easy whiskey to find either. No, it's easier now. They're, they're putting some money into it, um, giving it some promotion and um, I understand they put some money into the distillery as well, but, uh, you mentioned being in the whiskey bar in Nova Scotia. 
Yeah. And uh, it makes me think of how much I miss sitting at a bar and having a drink. You know, yeah. some, sometimes during this whole pandemic, it's the little things that you don't generally appreciate that you take for granted. And to be able to uh, sit at a bar and have a lovely cocktail and talk to the bartender and find out what's going on and meet the guy sitting next to you and have a conversation with somebody you never met before and it's all on hold. Yeah. Somebody just asked me, uh, you know, when all this is over, what are you going to do? And I said, I'm going to go to a bar and I'm going to sit down and I'm going to eat burgers and drink beer and have whiskey and talk to everybody. <laughs> That's what I really miss. All right. Next to last out of, out of eight. This is number seven. This is the Dalwini 30 year old at 51.9. So we're getting into the uh, age where we're starting to lose proof here. Um, very pale. Nice light golden color. Yep. Mm. Very appealing. Well, that's got that, that old, old barrel character for me. And I don't say that in a bad way. It's just like, distinctive. And the lack of alcohol content in this is noticeable on the it's nose. It's not too. burning you at all, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Boy, very light. That nose is very light. You know, this this seems like a, a whiskey that is just relaxing in an armchair. You know, it's not shouting, doesn't have anything to prove. There's the wood. And that continues, that armchair feel continues right on through. Yeah. That's, that's really a delicious whiskey, approachable. Um, yeah, the wood's definitely there, but once again, not much. Definitely mm -hmm. not too much. No, no, good balance here. Warming, uh, you know, you've got the sweetness, more... Um, Getting more honey out of this one. Um, a little bit of uh, floral character. You know, although this, is, although this is the first time I've ever sat down and analytically went through the special releases, you and I did go through them uh, surreptitiously at a local brew pub a few years ago. That's true. Um, and that was a pretty cool experience for me as well. It's just, I mean, it's a, I almost wish they would, they would, pardon me, sell the, uh, the set in these small bottles. So yes. So people could get a, a, a taste of all eight of them. Maybe um, they're listening. I'm, I'm, I hope so. <laughs> That'd be a great idea. Because um, it comes, I mean, you get the, the nice little tasting notes and a little thing about each distillery. Um, you get a, a gift love, box. Lovely it's gift box. A, yeah. It's a nice package. Well, that, that's really a great whiskey. It's nice. It's so cultured. Mm. All right, we have come to the end, my friend. We have one left. And what have we? We have a 30-year-old pity vague. No more in, in all the world, because this is, you know, uh, we're getting towards the end of it. There's no more being made, never will be. Come on, that's, that's like... 1989. That's like Weller. Stitzel Weller. will never run out of Stitzel Weller distilled whiskey. <laughs> they just keep putting drops out of the thing. So this is uh, at 50.8, the lowest ABV we've had. Yep. And Steve again, 30 years old and... Pale. Really pale whiskey. Hmm. And there's that same um, kind of... Uh, wood paneled room 
little bit of polish, uh, some. And I'm getting, I'm getting that balsam thing again. Yeah. Yeah. Just in the background. Yeah, I definitely get the putty. Yeah, I have to admit, the first time I read that as a tasting note, I'm like, what? What is it? But it's, well, it's there. And with most uh, flavor descriptors, there are a number of kinds of putty. You know, there's there's Glazier's compound and, and hell, there's Silly Putty. Silly Putty is probably the one that most people know. <laughs> Mm. Mm. That is really that is really complex without being overbearing. Yeah, it's it just it enters and then it just kind of almost like a crack geode. Well, I'm, I'm oh, there's, there's that. Sorry, go ahead. I'm smiling because I'm sitting here looking at you, and the only word on your shirt that you can read is hell. So everybody's seeing hell on your shirt. Uh, sorry, my sweatshirt is a uh, Shakespeare quote. It's uh, hell is empty and all the demons are here. And indeed they are. And we are exercising some of them as we speak. Man, but, uh, the way that opens up is, is... I'm getting sandalwood on that nose now, the longer it sits here. And I'm getting almost like a, like a burst of mint in the middle. When it, when it really hits it's the whole palate. It's, it's a really compelling nose. That, that without, without any of those components being over, over the top, it's really nice. Mm. A dryness toward the end. For as sweet as it presents itself, it really sort of dries out at the end. And I would guess that that's the oak influence after 30 years. Yeah. I was going to say, it presents very well for the 30 year old whiskey. It sure does. Lemon curd? There's lemon curd on that palate. And just a little, just a little whip of, uh, of licorice. Mm hmm. Yeah. And I, and I had a handful of Twizzlers nibs coming in here today, so the licorice is on my mind. Hmm. Well, I, I, I would have to say, and I'm, I'm not real familiar with this series uh, because they are so few and far between and hard to get and, and uh, um, a, bit more than oh, I, a bit more than I generally pay for whiskeys. But these are really, really high quality whiskeys that they have brought into this collection. Yeah, and, and I have to say, it, it almost as if um, there was a, an effort to find excellent whiskeys that they didn't have to charge $1,100 a bottle for this time. Yeah. Because um, there have been some problems with that. I mean, when they, you know, the increasingly rare uh, and, and Diminishing amounts of Brewer have made, I mean, you don't see Brewer in the collection anymore because it's just, it's out of, out of control. Um, but um, this is great. You know, some of the, um, uh, some of the more, you know, not really everyday whiskeys coming out in, uh, in this series. It's, it's delicious. It's a lot of fun. It's delicious. And this, this has been a lot of fun. I really enjoyed this for a, uh, for a guy that drinks mostly American whiskeys. This was a nice exercise in the diversity of scotch. Um, and boy, I'm, where do we, where do we try those four octavores, buddy? Oh boy. Okay. Let's, let's dive deep, baby. Let's dive deep. 
that's coming up next uh, this year's series of Rockamore whiskeys. So that's right. Stay so tuned. We'll, uh, we'll see you for that. Uh, thanks, sir. Uh, th thanks for spending some time with us. Yes, glad to have you here. Enjoy.